Hey guys, I'm Alex. And I'm Drew. And today on the Two Man Comic Book Club podcast, we're taking a look at several issues of the Matt Fraction run of Hawkeye. Let's go. <laughs> we're going to do it live until we get it right. It's hard. I, I just need to edit them together. I think the fun is seeing just how accurate we should have be. a we should have a Drew's uh, sound triggering um, cam. Yeah, just so you know, we are uh, we're doing these sounds live, so all the music yeah. and everything you hear is live. And Drew doesn't have his MIDI keyboard today, which I'm not even sure if it would be that much no. easier. I, my timing wouldn't be improved by <laughs> a MIDI keyboard. I mean, he's having to he's literally has those sounds cued to specific keys on his Mac, so he's just like pushing yeah. them. And uh, and I thought I had it timed right, and then I did not. And then I let go way too soon, so you heard this that awesome, amazing drop off right before I laughed. That was the that was a, a gap of my incompetence. It's all right. Uh, I feel like if people made it through that, they're gonna be with us till the end. And you know the thing is, I've noticed the last couple episodes we do this. I'm so concentrating on like, all right, hit this button, which should give me just enough time to say, and I'm Drew, and then I pay attention to the music and I stop listening to you yeah, so that I can cue the second half that needs to line up perfectly. And I always get done and I'm just like, did you introduce what we're covering? Because I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm also, uh, I'm handling the uh, video angles right now. So we have me, Drew, and then the comic books also. Uh, if that gets a little wonky, apologies. It's hard to remember to do everything at once. Tori's not with us today. Yeah. Um, it's much easier when we have somebody else yeah. running the angles. <clears throat> Before we get too far down the rabbit hole, though, we are coming upon last call for the two-man secret Santa that we are doing in our Discord. Yeah. Um, if you want to be a part of that, we're giving away comic books to each other. It's kind of secret Santa style. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever holiday you want to celebrate with and us, comic books can be involved. Just so you know, it's like we're saying like a setting a 20 to $30 uh, spending limit. So like, yeah. don't worry. Like you, you're not going to have to come and be like, I got to spend like 50, hundred bucks. No, it's just like no. grab a couple trade paperbacks that you like and yeah. send them to your buddy. And honestly, I'm willing to bet that if you're like, I really want to be involved, but 20 bucks is too steep for me this holiday season. I got kids. Mm -hmm. I got bills to pay. I got a turkey to buy. I would be so happy if somebody bought me a single floppy issue comic book. Yeah. Uh, five bucks. Or yeah. whatever, or I'm paid for a month of my Marvel Unlimited subscription. Uh, it's mm -hmm. all about giving the gift of comic books. I don't think any of our awesome fans would be upset at getting something lesser. It's all about the season of giving anyway. Yeah. So <clears throat> if you are interested in being involved, which we have like several people mm -hmm. involved, mm -hmm. like I would say like 10 to 12 already. Yeah. Um, so plenty of time to get in there. Sure. Also, if you don't want to or are not comfortable with like giving out your address to somebody, we will absolutely be a middleman. You can send us uh, whatever you want to give, and we'll kind of be that middle person to make sure that your packages get uh, delivered safely without you having to uh, give away to your privacy if that's something you yeah. are uncomfortable with. And, yeah, all you got to do is join the Discord, which the links now work yes. in the description. So you should just be able to open up whatever podcast you're listening to on and the app, <laughs> scroll down, you can click on the Discord, join it. It'll take you right to an invitation link. Uh, if you're on YouTube, same thing. You just click on the link. Uh, we would love to have you as part of the Discord and Secret Santa. And speaking of Santa, if you want uh, to get a little something from us as Santa, you got a chance, join the giveaway. Uh, we, we'll probably leave the giveaway window open almost up till Christmas. I would think so. So um, <clears throat> you got plenty of time for that. To do that, we just need you to go to our YouTube and subscribe and leave a message on this video or like, any other video. Like yeah, it. like it. Leave a message, something to the extent of hashtag Two Man Christmas 2021. And if you want a bonus entry, uh, jump over to Apple Podcasts and uh, leave us a five-star rating and review. Yeah. And I'll count that as an extra one. Yeah, follow us on Twitter. Honestly, if we can find out that you interacted with us in a positive way that helps us grow our channel, we're going to be ho 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 and slapping giveaway should, likes and should entries. we enter declan shalvey in it <clears throat> oh for sure <laughs> um yeah just we're just trying to spread the a, channel and spread you and a cop a new comic book declan we're gonna send him a copy of his own comic book uh yeah anyway i just wanted to throw that out there because in the last episode i had to go in with a uh, future alex and edit uh that to the front of it but it's super cool you want to be involved 
comic books are a really great Christmas gift, I've learned. Like, just yeah. a cool story, some cool because. art, sharing the love of the medium. So many people's only exposure yeah. to comic book anything is the MCU or DCEU or whatever. And this is where the source is. Yeah. The, the gift that I got from Alex last year just keeps giving because I forgot about it. And I started reading it a few weeks ago. So, yeah. I mean, all the way to November. Yeah. Same here. I just started actually digging into the Watchmen graphic novel that Drew gave me because I was like, you know what? <laughs> I need to read this. <laughs> well, theoretically, what you got me, uh, We Are Robin, yeah. I think it's part of the New 52. So part of me is like, ah. should I read it? But I mean, it's like one of the last series. So It'll I'm like, I will yeah. forget by the time we get there. Sure. And Alex and Drew read the New 52. Yeah. Can't wait to show you some more of what's coming with that. But uh, anyway, speaking of all our social media stuff, uh, Drew, where can they find our two man accounts? Uh, find us on Twitter at two man comic book with the number two, Instagram, two man comic book club with the number two. On Facebook, just search two man comic book club. You'll find us. Uh, shoot us an email, uh, two man comic book club at gmail.com. Join our Patreon, c- patreon.com slash two man comic book club. Yes. Also, link down in the show notes. There's a $2 thing just to help us along. There's a five buck thing, and you'll get some bonus content. Uh, there's a, if you, if you do enough, I will write you your own superhero theme song. Yeah, okay, like nobody's taking us up on that yet. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> uh, who doesn't want their own superhero theme song? We'll uh, debut it on the show, and then I'll send you an MP3 file that you can do with whatever you want. I hear say that Drew is currently working on our own. Yeah, Captain 166. Uh, yeah, Oh. Uh, I demand the tempo be as oh, such. Yeah. <laughs> what do you what do you think? This is my first day. Yeah. yeah. No. Um it will only be 166. Like and subscribe on YouTube. This is one of the coolest ways that you can get in on this podcast where you can actually see the panels that we're talking about. Super cool way to interact with us and also it helps us justify the ridiculous amount of time that we spend setting up. <laughs> oh yeah, we we're, we're going to set up a camera one of these days because you should see it. Uh we've got this HDMI cable running over here that I have to like l- hold on to my leg as I step over. Uh, yeah, it, it's a comedy of errors here. Like I really think if we if we live streamed it, um, you would put that Benny Hill uh, music yeah. stuff beneath it, and it would be appropriate. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. It uh, adds another level to what we're doing here, and uh, it's only going to get better. We have some decent equipment, better than most, I would say. But uh, we have plans for the future. The future. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on all social media at Alex Wayne Miller. Wayne is W-A-Y-N-E, just like Bruce Wayne, because I am Batman. Uh, Drew, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at, I almost said Two Man Comic Book, uh, at Drew Morris Comp. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Drew, Mar- Drew Morris Composer. Uh, go to my band camp, um, drewmorrismusic.bandcamp.com. Or, hey, I've got an album. It's called Cable Theory, Volume 1. Alex it's pretty dope. has told me that it's the perfect music to read comic books to. And I'm working on a new one that's specifically for comic book reading. But anyway, you can find that on Bandcamp or uh, like wherever you stream music. I've been listening to it on repeat while I do paperwork uh, <laughs> on Apple Podcasts so that I can pay myself approximately seven-tenths of a cent uh, each time I listen to something. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Cable Theory Volume 1. You can find information out about that on my website, drewmorsmusic.com. Yes, uh, we do not have a What You've Been Reading Yo today, but I do have yeah. something in place of that because we're recording this in the same episode that we, or same day that we did. We're in the same thing. Time before time last episode, so we did a double recording today, and then we... <laughs> I almost used an inappropriate expression just now. We uh, used all of our What You've Been Reading Yo's. Mm-hmm. Uh Sidebar aside, if you would like a two man after dark podcast where I could use all of the PG thirteen R expressions that I wanted, <clears throat> uh, join our Patreon. There's a Patreon for that, and uh, you'll get it. Uh, on top of that, Drew and I have been recently discussing a uh, another spinoff segment, if you will, not quite a full podcast because I don't think this. In- I mean, it could warrant its own podcast, but I think we can just kind of shoehorn it into the two-man envelope. But doing a Alex and Drew rate the MCU, which would require us to go through and watch every MCU everything Mm -hmm. and rate it. Like an actual, we'll come up with a system, and it won't just be my rating and then his rating. I mean, maybe that can kind of be a thing, but we're going to like 
somehow quantify an actual rating system for all of this, and you're going to have the definitive two-man ranking for the MCU, which I think could be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, because it's a hard thing to do, right? Like, like how do you rate Endgame and Infinity War against other great ones yeah. like Spider-Man Homecoming and Far From Home or, and Shang-Chi and I Black mean, Panther? Like, it's hard. I, I feel like I could easily <clears throat> try to compare Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor Ragnarok. Right. But how do you compare... Guardians of the Galaxy against Infinity Wars. I right, mean, or like, Iron Man versus Ant-Man. You they know, are different. Way different films, but we're going to come up with like a, an actual rubric. If um, there's something that you think should be on that rubric, join the Discord and let us know. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll absolutely want your input. Yeah. It would be, even be cool. I thought about this. We uh, perhaps watch and maybe do some live tweeting with some two-man fans mm-hmm. or at least get in the Discord and, and t- just have a discussion. What if there's a way we could <clears throat> do that... Uh, share play apple like watch oh, together yeah. with some two man for fans. sure uh and we absolutely tweet. could yeah that would be really awesome because we know a lot of our two man fans mm-hmm. we know y'all we love y'all um <laughs> still recovering from a cold just like i was last time um is that it before we jump into matt fraction hawkeye i guess it feels fast because we didn't have a what you've been reading yo i i, I don't know if, if if this is appropriate but i have to brag on holly Ah. My wonderful wife. Oh, and it's After absolutely appropriate. We came walking out of Eternals. Yeah. We watched it opening night. And on the way home, she was like, you know, I think I'd ri- like to read some Eternals. Yeah. So I was just like, queen. here we go. And then I, I just kept that in the back of my mind. And then actually, by the time this comes out, I can say I got her two um, Eternals trade paperbacks for her birthday, which is tomorrow, the day that we're recording this. So it's safe ah. that I can say this. Um, Happy and, birthday, Holly. Yeah. And then a couple weeks later, we had dinner with Coldy, K O L D Y, and just started talking about uh, she, the Black Knight came up. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know, I'd like to read more about him. Yeah. And I was like, note to self. Mm-hmm. And on the drive home, I was just talking to her about um, comics. And yeah. she was like, can I read any of these on my Kindle Fire? So. Like by that end of that night, like we re- we learned, you still can't get DC or Marvel right. on there, but there is Comixology because it's made by Amazon. Mm-hmm. And I got her the digital trade paperback uh, of um, Miss Marvel. Yeah. So she read that, and once she the was one done, we covered. Yes, on the one we covered. Correct. Yeah. Before and after that, she was we couldn't get the next one on Comixology, but I gave her my iPad to borrow mm-hmm. to read to pick up where she left off on Marvel Unlimited. And like, we'll be watching TV at night and she comes over whenever she's ready to go to bed. Typically I go to bed a little bit after her. She'll just come over, grab my iPad and go to bed. And by the time I get there, she's sitting there reading Miss Marvel. So score. It's happening. Yeah. It's happening. So I just got to brag on her. Uh, If you are listening and you're like, she's in the discord, believe it or not. She's holy moly guacamole on there. So, (laughs) If you uh, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh man, I I understand where you're coming from. I think you'd enjoy this. Maybe just send a little message to her and tell her uh, maybe like, hey, I got something you should read after you finish Miss Marvel. Yeah, is it holy moly guacamole? I, I always read it as holly, holly moly. moly. But well, holly moly was what she like would be her email addresses and stuff yeah. in like uh, high school. But I don't remember if it's spelled with two L's. I can't remember because, how I spell my own name. I mean, holly moly guacamole doesn't roll off the tongue like holy moly guacamole. I, I can't sure. remember. I don't know how it's... I think holy moly guacamole. <clears throat> well, potato, guacamole, avocado. Yeah, they're all the same. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I know that she would be angry if I told her, uh, yeah, I talked about you at length on the podcast, but <laughs> I did it anyway because I'm proud. Yeah, she's only going to... You're only going to get caught if she actually listens. So I don't know if she's listened to a safe. single one. <laughs> I don't think Katie has either. Uh, anyway, uh, I think that's it. We're going to jump into Matt Fraction and Teams Hawkeye. Uh, I was sniffling and coughing all over mm-hmm. the last recording, so I'm going to lean on my buddy Drew to yeah. kind of help us get across the finish line yeah. and not just... Uh, these are unsubscribe coughs and sneezes that I'm doing here. We don't want to lose you. Um, still recovering from my cold, <clears throat> but I will uh, read out the team. So for this issue seven, we actually had guest art. So Matt Fraction still writing, Steve Lieber. Uh, let me get this on the panel here. Yeah, so Steve Lieber and Jesse Ham did the art. Matt Hollingsworth is still coloring, which is honest, honestly like 
key because it still kind of holds you in like the same color palette and makes the art feel like it flows even though we have new art. Um, we have Chris Eliopoulos doing letters and David Aha did the cover even though he was not here to do the actual art for this issue. And Aha will, is it Asia Aha? I actually don't know. Um, I'll find out while you're doing okay. this. Um, anyway, super awesome. A uh, little series we've got yeah. to go here. One of the cover we came. Uh, how long ago did we cover? I don't. I don't remember. It was a month, two months ago. <laughs> uh, we covered one, two, three, and then four, five. Correct. So, so today we're covering what? Uh, yeah. What I. <laughs> the reason we're covering this is because I wanted to make a joke. Um, so. There's a specific character who we got to know in issue four. I don't know if that was the first time or what, but his name is Grills. And uh, we met him whenever he was grilling hot dogs and hamburgers on the roof of the building. And there's some, he's a very important character, in my opinion, for what I thought was a three issue arc. So I wanted to cover the Grills <clears throat> trilogy or the Grillogy. And I went through and I read it, I reread it, and then I realized, no, there was more to this. So I backed up because I thought the Grills trilogy was going to be 9, 10, 11, which concludes with the Pizza Dog episode. Yes. Um, and I really wanted to cover that. But then I realized issue 7 is very, is arguably almost more important than 9, except for 9 is really important. Sure. And then 13 kind of covers it as well. So just like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which started as the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy. But now if you look at the cover, it says the in increasingly inaccurately named Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy, which is five issues. This is the increasingly inaccurately named Grillogy. Ah, oh, I love it. So <clears throat> issue seven, nine, 10, 11, 13. Though nine is really only the last couple pages. Yeah. Um, I will say I did some research on our artist's name, and I found this nice little blurb from the New York Post when he did an interview for this uh, look at Hawkeye when this was coming out. And I'm just going to read this quote, and it'll answer all of our questions. He's uh, When asked about his name, uh, this is a direct quote, he said, uh, Ah, well, it's a long story, but here in Spain we pronounce it Aha, or Aha, A-H-A. But also here in Spain, my first name isn't pronounced David, it's David. So David Aha, or Aha, I'm just, I don't know, hard to say still. But he says, with my last name, I don't really know. Some people call me Asia or Aha or Asia. Uh, as long as you say something good about me, it's okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> David, did. we appreciate you uh, yeah. being so cool about us yeah. butchering your name. Um, cool. About to jump in. So uh, I'm going to throw up panels up here yeah. as we go along and uh, we'll just so go from there. we're trying something kind of new with this episode. We want to just give the broad strokes because seriously, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I this series of 22 books yeah. is the first series I ever read that I was like, you know, this is one of my top five ever. I don't know what the other four are and I don't yeah. know where it is, but like this is such a good Series like I went back and I listened to the first uh, two issues we did, mm -hmm. and I was like, or the first two episodes, and I was like, yeah, one and two, uh, one, two, and three were awesome, or one of, uh, some of them got a little weak, you know, or whatever, and I didn't really know, and I was like, yeah, I read five and six or seven and eight or something like that, and I didn't quite know where they were going, right? And that's just because I hadn't made it to the end. Mm -hmm. This is a, this isn't a, this happens which directly relates to this, which directly relates to this, and it's just a, a, a ladder. This is um, uh, shoots and ladders. Yeah. So, like, this happens in issue one, which relates to issue eight, which you then you spin back to here, which then makes sense in 22. So, mm -hmm. like, you got to... I want you... I, Andrew Noel Morris, want you to read this run of Hawkeye in its entirety. So we're not going to go through with our meticulous, like this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens, like yeah. we do a lot. Uh, like we're going to talk super broad strokes and it's going to spoil some stuff. So I hope you've read this beforehand, but please, please, please um, read, read it. Read it, please. So um, like I said, I thought that this was going to start with issue nine, but it actually goes back to seven because seven gives us a back, ground but behind grills mm -hmm. so um hawkeye 
is basically helping him move stuff. He's taken some stuff to his parents' house, his dad's house, sorry, because his mother has passed away. And it's a torrential downpour. And there's, <laughs> I noticed there was one thing, I can't remember if it happens in here or not, but Hawkeye has the, the worst luck with tape. Yeah. Because he was like trying to get the tape to close right. things down. Um, oh, tape, you are useless. <laughs> yeah, because he was, he was looking for tape uh, in issue two or three. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because he needed to label his, his uh, arrows. Anyway, you'll get it. it when, not if, but when you read them all. You know, I will say while we're looking at some of this art, I would say it's comparable to David's work. Um, like, yeah, it, it fits. It's I not didn't, the same. I didn't quite realize it wasn't him <clears throat> until I turned to the second half of this book, yeah. which is all about um, Kate, Kate. And yeah. it's a totally it's different way art. Different style, yeah, yeah. Way different style. Way different. So anyway, um, there's a whole lot that happens in here, but you get to meet Grills as a person. Mm-hmm. And we learn his name is actually Gil. <laughs> and Hawkeye's right. like, wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait, so your name is Grills, but uh, your name is Gil, but people call you Grills. And he just kind of laughs yeah. about that. I think he that happens at the very that end. later at the back end of yeah. this book as it has a little more weight while he's learning his name. Yeah, because he does have it. He, he talks to <laughs> whenever he's there. They go to his dad's house and they start trying to move stuff. And like the rain just builds up and long story short, there's a flood and it breaks through the, Yeah, this is like a, a hurricane level yeah. storm. Like it's serious. And it, th- they break through the levee. Um, you could probably hear Led Zeppelin playing. Mm-hmm. When a levee breaks. I can't remember how that goes. Thanks Parker. Um, so <laughs> they're like just trying to get stuff going and a whole lot of Grill's mom's boxes and stuff are downstairs and he was supposed to do, the dad was supposed to do something with him, but the dad is just like, he's stone faced. He, he, he yeah. can't get through to him. But yeah, he keeps like right here. He's like, it's just water boy. Always be more stuff. Little water ain't nothing. Yeah. And I'm a cold, hard man. Mm-hmm. But eventually um, the, the, the flood comes through and just like it, washes out the entire basement and yeah. they're trying to evacuate to the front. And Hawkeye is like asking the dad, he's like, where's grills? And he's like, who, who's grills? Mm-hmm. He was like, your son. He was like, Oh, what? That's not his name. So that's whenever we realize, don't know what his name is. Um, but he runs out trying to find him and finds grills trying to save one of his mother's boxes down in the flooded basement. Yeah. It's a pretty touching, yeah. sad moment. And anyway, he ends up, you know, they get out of there. They they get together. The the father and son kind yeah, of have, has to save him. Have have kind of a touching moment. And the dad's like, "Well, there's a, we got a boat in the attic. Yeah, we can we can get out of here." Yeah, I do want to mention one yeah. detail. Um, we are covering you know big stuff, but just Grill was sad. Like Hawkeye had to save him because he he couldn't swim in this. It was a big flood, and uh, he's like, you know. That was everything I had of hers, and it's gone. And then Hawkeye's like, "Well, maybe not everything." And then we get this like pretty intense silhouette of like, "Yeah, that's what you have." You know, you have her husband, which also yeah. happens to be your father, and yeah. that's what leads to that kind of touching moment. And they yeah. they make amends. But yeah, yeah they. I, I'm great at boats. I was <laughs> talking about cracked me up. But yeah, they they get in it and they paddle off, and this mm-hmm. beautiful scene right here. And this is where you get the grills. Yeah. Oh, also, I should mention. Hawkeye realized that he didn't know Gil's real name. Yeah. And he realized this while he's trying to save him. He's mm-hmm. like, I really hope I don't have to like learn this guy's name at his funeral because that would be tragic. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's, this is really like a two part issue. I'm not going to go mm-hmm. into the second half cause it's all about uh, Kate <clears throat> and it is important. Um, but like While I said, talking, I want you to read this. some of this art. It's way different. Way like different. You just yeah. get like this picture of Kate here. Like, yeah, it's not bad. There's one with her like running. Yeah. Uh, I think this is, uh, let's maybe see. Maybe one more. She, the flood star. She's like, I there, need somebody to shoot. There, right, right there. Yeah. You're just like, that is, that is different. <laughs> yeah, it's cool sure. though. I like it. Yeah. But anyway, it's, it's, it's cool. It's worth reading, but this is the Grillogy, not the. Kate-ilogy. Bishilogy. Bishop. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then we go to, we skip eight important stuff happens that relates to the beginning of issue nine, but we don't care <laughs> for the sake of this. It's really good. It's really good stuff. It's about like so jumping bishops nine. nine, like the very end of nine. Yeah. Um, we get a whole bunch of info about Hawkeye's ladies, ex-girlfriends, ex-wives, uh, wards, all kinds of stuff. So 
Do you know what page of nine you're wanting to look at? The one that's all of a sudden grills on the on the attic <coughs> or on the on the roof. It's like it might be the last panel or the last page. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we're jumping to the end, and we get to see grills here. And when this happened, I was mad about it. But they're having this conversation, and Grills drops some knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know, after they had a kind of a bro moment in the in the yeah. paddle boat, um, he's br- talking about how he loves somebody. Is he talking about Kate? Yeah. Okay. So he's basically saying like, "Yeah, I, I, we're talking about Hawkeye saying Hawkeye, he loves Kate, yeah. not Grills." <laughs> well, Grills might maybe, you know, yeah, yeah, but not here. She's 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 a wonderful lady. <clears throat> um, but Grills basically drops some knowledge. He's like, "Well." have you ever told her all these things you're saying to me yeah. about her? And he's like, well, maybe you should. And Hawkeye's like, man, that's a great idea. I'm going to go write her a letter. Yeah. And like he walks down and somebody says something and Grills turns and then boom, somebody shoots him right in the head. And I was just like, what? No, we just got to know Grills. Yeah. And we see that it's this guy. I can't remember if we had seen him before, but he he's... He's around a lot. Yeah, he said, uh, I told you I came from hell. Um, it it does have this moment. I'll swipe back here. I guess we should have given you a warning, though this isn't terribly graphic. <clears throat> um, did you mention earlier that Grills like constantly calls Hawkeye Hawk guy? Oh, I forgot yeah, about so that's that. That's kind of a reoccurring theme. Like he He's uh, a little bit socially awkward. That's what first endeared him to us. Right. Yeah. He like calls him Hawk guy, and then Clint will be like, hey, just... You know, because I'm your friend and I care about you, the more that people know that I'm an Avenger and I live here, the more it puts you at risk. So how about we ease off the whole Avengers Hawkeye thing and you just call me Clint? And the girl's like, yeah, sure thing, Hawkeye. You also, know, like, there was a, I know this isn't what you're getting to, yeah. but they actually have a conversation and they're like, no, Hawkeye. Yeah, not like, Hawkeye. And he's like, like the like the guy on MASH. And he's like, yeah, Hawkeye. <laughs> right. And we're just like, okay, so this guy... Yeah. yeah, just a just a step uh, step slow to get to where everybody else mm-hmm. is at. But um, he like has the confidence, or not? I don't want to say the confidence. He's just it's a little level of development in their relationship. I think, and when he tells him to go write a letter to Kate, he's sitting there on the roof, still grilling, and you hear him go, "It's Gil," kind of like I want my friend to call me Gil. At least how I interpreted it. And that's when somebody else off panel says Gil, and it catches Gil off guard. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Where'd you come from?" And then he gets shot, and it's. And I keep wondering this why. Guy here. Why? What did Gil ever do? <clears throat> and I don't know that we find out, but yeah. Anyway, so I'm sorry to just jump straight to that, but I felt like we needed to teach you a little bit with issue seven. So mm-hmm. now for issue ten, um, will you pull up the very like the 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 title page for ten? Yes. Because this broke my heart. Um. Because we've had all these awesome lines from Matt Fraction, like this is what uh, Hawkeye does when he's not with the Avengers. Haven't you been reading this? Blah, blah, blah. Very cheeky, but right there, it's like, aren't you still sad about grills? I know I am. And when I read that, I was like, I really am. Yeah, it's sad because he's just this, I mean, he's kind of the closest thing we have outside of Kate, Mm -hmm. you know, like this, just another character that kind of grounds Hawkeye a little more. Because again, we didn't really talk about this much in issue seven, but like, a lot of the interest and intrigue from this book is the fact that we're getting a depiction of an Avenger not fighting Thanos or Galactus or whatever big bad, just but helping somebody in a flood, just saving the lives of somebody in an event that possibly and probably is very real to other people. Like you know, you can imagine there've been a lot of <clears throat> a lot of disasters and catastrophes that people have experienced that are comic book fans, and they will read this and relate to this. So it's very real. Clint Barton is just a man. He doesn't have superpowers, but he is an Avenger, and he can save you, and it's just very real. So Grill, in a very real sense, is us, you yeah. know, just a guy yeah. living among somebody like that. So it hits home. You know, before we get into this, I think I might like to take a quick break and uh, yeah. take a drink. So we'll be right back and jump in with Issue 10. And we're back. And we're going to jump into issue 10. And this one, like, it's another of those where it's almost not worth going into. But if we're, if this is the point of this is grills, but I'm going to tell you anyway, because you can tell from the cover, this is about the dude that killed him. And 
we just kind of get his backstory. And I'm ashamed to say, I don't actually remember the dude's name. I only have white painted face guy. So if you find that, uh, feel free to butt in. Yeah. But basically this is uh, his backstory, his origin story, where we, we meet him at a party and Kate's there and they're basically talking and... This cracked me up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I felt like that was one of the first times I saw futs yeah. used, and they use it a lot from yeah. here on out. Um, but yeah, we learn basically he was from somewhere in Europe. Kazimierz Kazimierczak okay. is his name. I think Kaz. Okay. We can call him Kaz. Um, so he, he, it seems like he grew up in a circus and some people torch the place. And eventually he falls in with a bad crowd and becomes like an enforcer type person, a, an assassin. They do call him Kazi or Ka- okay. Katsi. Cool. You and somewhere along the way, he falls in with the tracksuit mafia, the same one that's been terrorizing the building, um, the bros, you yeah. know? He bros okay. Yeah. And what, along somewhere along the way, they come and he's like, you should work for us. Mm-hmm. And basically, that's the whole thing wrapped up. There was a lot of uh, flirting with Kate yeah. along the way. There was a cool moment where he he kind of does the cool, like, say something dramatic and walk away. She was like, no, hey, yeah. you don't get to do that. And he's like, she asks, how old are you? And he's like, 37. She was like, yeah, you should know better than that. Yeah. And she leans in and kisses him and then just turns away and she's like, Hawkeye, out. Yeah, and then I'm leaves. Yeah, find that real quick. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> just zip it through. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's the big juxtaposition over the top of this. We're getting this backstory mm-hmm. of this criminal and... At the same time, Kate, our one of kind our of protagonists, is kind of falling, him. not yeah. falling for him, but definitely having a having a moment yeah. with him. Uh, where is this thing? Oh yeah, so here he leaves, and uh, he says, "Be seeing you, Kate Bishop." And she's like, "Hey, you don't get to do that." And then she kind of pulls the the alpha thing and does mm-hmm. it herself and gives him a big old smooch. And then there's the Hawkeye out yeah. and uh, intriguing. But then as he leaves, yeah. he starts goes, putting on his makeup. And then the next thing we see, he's up on the roof with grills and it's just i mean yeah there's some there's some stuff with kate and hawkeye like yeah. they're just down there having target practice while grills is getting killed upstairs mm-hmm. and it's just like it just really i don't know it i saw that and i was just like oh why why did you have to do that because i was hoping it was happening afterwards but they they keep bringing it back up yeah they make you sit in this which uh despite it being making you sit in the murder of a character you really cared for. It does kind of make you feel something, which I appreciate, you know, like there's a, there's real emotion in this and that's kind of a reoccurring theme. We're going to see some different perspectives over the next couple issues that, um, will feel like they're kind of reusing material, which they are. They're going to show like a certain day through the context of several different perspectives, I guess I should say. And they kind of redid that here. We set up with nine, what happens grill dies. Now the first one we're looking is, Let's get some backstory for Kazi, this villain here who just took out Grills. We still don't know why he's coming after mm-hmm. Clint or Hawkeye or his, his loved ones, but um, we'll get some more perspectives in a second. So we move on to issue 11, and whenever we first mentioned that we were doing this um, issue or reading this series, Somebody mentioned the pizza dog mm-hmm. issue to me. So I was just like, I've got to see this. And that's what this is. Um, and it's one of the most awesome books I think I've ever read. Just because, well, there's hardly any reading. It's really cool. Like the art carries a lot of the weight in. We're seeing this whole issue through the perspective of Lucky, the pizza dog. Yeah. So um, do you want to just pull up the first page of this just look at this. I mean, this tells you what you need to know. <laughs> Lucky yeah, is alone, sitting there this dialogue here. walking. Yeah, or watching. And all you hear, all, all that Lucky seems to understand are the words that might be something that were relevant to him. Yeah. And he's just sitting there. And I don't know. He's just like, oh, this is, this looks interesting. I, I like this person. I like this person. But I like also these like little, asso- like there's Clint. He associates mm-hmm. him with the hand as pets, the smell of coffee, giving him food. Mm-hmm. And then same thing over here. It smells like flowers, and there's pizza, and then some alcohol, and he maybe smells the kiss. Like that's mm-hmm. kind of a nice little touch here. Like he smells that she has had alcohol, and maybe a kiss. So like he can smell the presence mm-hmm. of that person. But then there's a heart because he loves Kate. Yeah. 
but he's just like, yeah, I think I'm done. I'm going to wander off. And, and basically he just like, he goes through the building and, you know, he has those same kind of readouts Mm -hmm. for everybody where he's just like, ah, this person, um, looks like uh, they're making some noises. Uh, this one, uh, like has a bicycle. This one gives me candy, you know, stuff Uh, like that. The music here, but, and then heartbreaking G grills is just has a, He's uh, crossed out crossed and he out. can't really smell him. He's like, Where yeah, he's he? like, well, it, it might be because he's not there. Right. Um, but anyway, he just, this whole issue, like you really short of like literally throwing up every single panel, like this is, it's really good. And he goes through and the next scene. Yeah. He does go up to the, the roof and he sees grills and he's just like looking around. He's like, Oh, this looks interesting. What should I do about this? And, um, He's kind of, it's like showing him his thought process, like wondering what it is he's that goes on to this. Like yeah, a good he's, boy. He's, he's, a, he's as good a detective as Batman. Yeah. And he has some run-ins with the tracksuit mafia, and they're like, Arrow? And it's funny, I didn't realize until I was rereading, but this scene right here is the run-in with Hawkeye's brother. Yeah, so, which we haven't come across no. yet. But, but um, and then he's, it's just, it's sort of like, let's just take five minutes of each of his days and toss it through. You know, we Mm -hmm. we have a scene right here that we haven't witnessed yet. Right. Of Hawkeye talking to the cops. Yeah. And I I love that, just him sitting there drinking straight out of the coffee pot. Like, that burns my my face just thinking about it. Yeah, there is a nice little right here. He's not getting all the words, but he does Mm -hmm. get good boy. And he's a happy little doggo face right there. Keep eye place. Um, But... Anyway, I, I think I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Um, he does end up like seeing some of these bad guys that he doesn't have a good experience with anyway. And they he gets up on the roof with them because they're like trying to see what maybe the cops know or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he gets in a fight and is like knocked one of them off of the roof or whatever. And I think he falls too. But then the next scene, he's like in the house with this uh this mom or grandma yeah. of the tracksuit mafia and finally he he gets away and he's just like I'm out of here I'm out of here and we see a nice little embrace with Hawkeye and Lucky mm-hmm. but then the he just runs off to be with with a uh, Kate and then we see she's uh, he rides with her to LA and it's just like whoa where did that come from you know yeah they uh they kind of introduce this maybe possible falling out between Clint and Kate in this back doorway that we can't fully understand because we're getting the perspective mm-hmm. from Pizza Dog. Yeah. And uh, it's a little heartbreaking. You can kind of tell he doesn't quite know what's going on, especially in these panels here. Like, you know, Clint just called him in and he's sitting there and then Kate's like, come on, Lucky. And he just says, hey, hey. And all we know is that the dog's in there and maybe he's kind of confused about what's going on because mm-hmm. he's a dog. Yeah. And uh, it just ends just yeah. like that. So we're going to skip the next one. Uh, it's it's Skip 12? Yeah. Obviously, you would read it um, yeah. if you were doing the whole thing. But this is just about grills. This is the Grillogy, uh, five-part Grillogy. So um, and right there at the front of the thing, once again, uh, Matt Fraction just rubbing salt in my eyeballs. He's like, hey, last time they killed Grills, as if we could forget. And I'm like, dude, stop it. Yeah. You mean you're going to make me relive this again? Mm-hmm. So um, this one, there's a whole lot more to it, but I'm going to try to... I, I went a little bit more detail on the, the Pizza Dog episode just because it was so different. But this one... Um, let me just give you the rough overview mm-hmm. so that you know, because like I said... Uh, you're going to go read this. I've already decided it. I have spoken. Um, yes. But this, we've, we've seen this from everybody's point of view except for Clint's. Yeah. Like all of these. We saw it from the dog. We saw it from the dude, the white painted Kazi. face guy, Kazi. And, you know, so now we're finally going to see with Clint. And basically, we see the cops come in and ask about it. Because he wasn't there, you know, he's probably beating himself over. Yeah. There's a really sad funeral where he has another like embrace with the dad, and 
but meanwhile, the tracksuit mafia, I keep calling them that. I can't remember what they're actually called. Um, bro. Uh, they're just like sitting over there watching and you're just like, oh man, you know, this is about to get worse because yeah. we don't really know what was coming behind. Like, why'd they kill him? And other than just to sh- send a sign, like this is our building. We want it back. And you'll figure out exactly what they want from it at some point. Mm-hmm. But man, like just one more time, we, we, we get kind of closure. Sea grills go in the ground yeah. and be angry about it the whole time. But, and we also see pizza dog run away again, mm-hmm. like not run away, but disappear. It's just, it's an intense run. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I really did enjoy this like whole thing. There's also like this kind of, uh, like side story of like Hawkeye, um, having to deal with all of his ex wife slash girlfriend mm-hmm. slash Kate. And even the, <clears throat> what's her name? The, um, the lady from like the earlier run where he, helped her out in this situation with yeah, the car. Penny. Penny, yeah. Um, and just the fallout of, uh, you know, this could be a whole other thing that we talk about outside of the Grillogy, just the fact that he has, like, this complex uh, lady trouble thing of, like, falling in love with several different people. And, like, he even, like, we kind of witness him finalize his divorce, even on the yeah. to him, like, to uh, just... Oh, yeah, that was an interesting scene. She, she He borrows a pen from her. Like, yeah. She, she comes in and he's like, hey, does that van look like a van or like a van? She was right. like, Clint, that doesn't make any sense. And she walks over, oh, yeah, that's a van. Right. And then she goes down to check it out while he signs the papers and she beats him up. Right. And I was just like, whoa. That was that was Jessica, right? Like that Spider-Woman? Was that was Bobby. Okay, that was Bobby. Okay. Um, or was Jessica the wife or was Bobby the wife? It was Bobby, yeah. Jessica okay. was just an ex. But anyway. Who is Bobby? <coughs> I always forget her name. Hold on. This is worth it. I'm putting this on uh, Drew while I look at this. Uh, Bobby. Bobby. Bobby from Bobby. Marvel. That was my two different Bobby impressions of. Hey, it's Mockingbird. I don't even know. Mockingbird is. is, uh, She and Clint dated for a long while. She's an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, yeah, we see the three that he has a romantic interest with are Bobby, Mockingbird, Jessica. Drew, Spider Woman, and uh, uh, Black Widow. Uh, 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 Natasha. Uh, Natasha Romanoff is her name. Thank you. And anyway, Kate. and then like Kate also being like the main quote unquote love interest slash friend in this. Lots of complex love triangles, especially when you're dating uh, people from work, uh, to put it lightly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, any other thoughts on this? I. I'm sorry. I feel like I failed at trying to give the the overview of this without giving it all away. Um, I have a feeling if I listen, when I listen back to this, I'm going to be like, dude, that was awful. I don't know anything about what just happened. I don't think um, so. But because I was trying to be more brief with it. I mean. I glossed over things I wish I hadn't and I dull, delved, delved into things I probably didn't need to. But that's because, seriously, I want you to read it. Yeah, I mean, I'll second that. Like he he's not going to sit here and read it for you. Like that's, that's not the whole point of a book club. So go back and read this. There's a lot of stuff that we did gloss over purposefully. So I think he did a fine job of covering the points that we needed to do. I've heard it both ways. (laughs) uh, Just being able to like have this whole thing, like digesting every issue, even beyond this, like view it as a full work is going to add so much more depth and detail to it. Just the context is key for all of this. So, Please go out of your way to read this. Is it all in Comicsology as well? It might be. I bet and, it is. And it's I know that there there was also that new uh, omnibus paperback or yeah. that trade paperback that just came out that has a few extra things. Mm-hmm. Like there was an annual and another thing. So there's multiple ways for you to find this. You know, honestly, if you ever thought about getting into comic book collecting, I bet you money these are going to go up in price as soon as the Hawkeye because mm-hmm. they're 100. Matt Fraction is a, like a consultant for the show like they brought him in like they're doing the fraction run the color palettes are all the same in the trailer you can see the russian bros um it's going to be awesome the value of these is for sure going to go up um so if you're looking to get into comic book collecting and you want to read this might be a good time uh anything else before we take a quick break to get our trivia ready yeah because we we (coughs) This is weird. It feels strange coming back to a trivia. Mm-hmm. Alex has five points. I have four points. Yeah. So 
anyway, yeah, like like I said, I this is really good. It was good enough that once I finished, I kicked myself for not finishing it sooner because it all makes sense. You just I wish I had like honestly gone back to the beginning whenever I picked it up at and started reading again at number twelve. Um, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, so learn from my mistake. Start at one. Try to get it read over the course of a week or so, so it's all fresh in your mind because it is. It's it's good. Yeah, this fraction run is at the top of a lot of people's lists for comics. I've personally seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, so check it out. We'll be right back uh, for some trivia. And we're back with our lightning round trivia where our questions are faster than Hawkeye finds himself in interesting situations with women. That's very fast. Yeah, pretty quick. This looks bad. Yeah, this looks bad. Uh, so I'm up five to four, so I'll go first. Yeah. And then we'll... Right. No, you'll go first. Should I go first? That way you know if you have to give me one yeah. or two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, so I, I feel like you know who made him up. Who mm-hmm. created him? Because, you know, it's the same one that gets credit for everything. But I'm curious. Do you know the artist who is um, known for on the artist side of creating Hawkeye? Ah, I have two guesses. Uh, I'll go with my gut feeling, Jack Kirby. If not, I was going to say Steve Ditko. No and no. Wow. Yeah. Who so Stan Lee was the one who did okay. the... Well, no, he... I mean, he made him... <laughs> he created him, apparently. But... Uh, in terms of the actual artist that created him, mm-hmm. Don Heck. Oh, okay. So, I wouldn't have ever guessed that. Me either. I, that's when I saw it and I was like, oh, hey, that's something. <clears throat> okay. So you need two. One to, to tie, win. two to win. Okay. So I've got two questions then. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm so sorry. Oh, they're, God. They're difficult. Oh, wait. We never. Sorry. No. <laughs> we never stopped. We're good. <laughs> so if you uh you're if you're wondering why i just freaked out i that's a little behind the scenes i was thinking of the editing of this episode mm-hmm. so i'm sorry everybody nothing crazy happened Everything. i just have the memory of a, a walnut wow worse than a goldfish yeah. uh cool so i have two questions i apologize for the level of difficulty of these questions but they will be educational for our audience uh referring to mockingbird uh, the character who Clint used to be married to, who he divorced officially on paper in the issues that we just covered. Um, two questions about her. Uh, I think I'll give you <clears throat> the one that you have a chance of guessing first. She has a degree in something, um, and it's relatively well known. It, it for as much as you can know such things, it's not something crazy. It's not like quantum mechanics or anything like that. It's just a degree that people have. You might even know somebody that has a degree like this. Can you guess of what that degree is? Do you have any thinking music queued up? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. There we go. It's very loud. Yeah. There's some more behind the scenes. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't actually turn the volume down. Uh, Seeing how the sausage is made. Yes. And yeah, I can't. Uh, forget Worth it. it. Um, Ding dong. <laughs> I short answer. I don't know. So my just based on the way you said it, I'm going to say communications. Uh, no, but good guess. I mean, that's a pretty generic degree. That's yeah. what I have. Yeah, that's she has right. a degree in biology. Okay, I lost. But maybe I can tie. You can at least tie if you get this, which is also See, possible. To I guess. Ha- Part of the thing, I have no idea who Mockingbird is. <coughs> so agent of Shield. <laughs> I, my, I was thinking Mockingbird. Maybe she's mocking people. Maybe her powers or maybe her skills are that she can camouflage herself. So or, or like mm-hmm. blend in. So I was going to say drama. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, you know, honestly, her. Well, I will say that. Maybe the answer to the last question could be vaguely helpful in guessing the answer to this next one, um, but we'll see. Either way, it's interesting to know. So she was injected with something, uh, I believe, near the events of the secret invasion thing where she actually was replaced by a scroll temporarily. <clears throat> and she was injected with something that enhanced her a little bit, um, not to the extent of... You know, other people that have been enhanced, but it definitely was like, a, oh, this is a better version. Can you guess? There are two things. One of them you've for sure heard of, or is related to what you've heard of. 
uh, can you guess what she was injected with? I mean, my first thought, super soldier serum. I'll give it to you. It's basically a, a lesser version of that she was injected with, which gave her a tiny subset of that power. So she's not technically a super soldier, but at the same time she was injected with, do you want to guess? You're not going to guess it, but you can anyway. If you do and guess it, I'll let you win the next round, no matter what. No matter what comic we cover, she was guess it. she was injected <laughs> with dark matter. No, <laughs> good guess though. Uh, Infinity formula, which actually helped her age more slowly. Another notable character who has that is Nick Fury, which is what explains why he ages so slowly because he's been around huh. for a minute. Huh. Um. Cool. You I win. win. You win. You won last time, and you still uh, won last time. To be fair, my questions were kind of hard. But fun facts, now people know more about Mockingbird than they thought. Um, I, otherwise, she I just has like I know that Mockingbird agility. exists. She's kind of a Black Widow I see. Uh, type character. He's really got a type, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, Jessica Drew has powers as Spider-Woman. Yeah. But yeah, he got a type. Anyway, uh, any closing thoughts? I know you said it wasn't a big deal, but I really feel like I underperformed on today's episode. So I'm Nonsense. sorry. I will do better <clears throat> in the future. I think it was adequate. I'm satisfied. Okay. Yeah. Not the first time you heard that today. <laughs> uh, cool. That's been it for this episode of the Two Man Comic Book Club podcast. Until next time, we will see you later. Bye. What you want us to read next? Let us know on Discord. Let us know. The Two Man Comic Book Club podcast is hosted by Alex Miller and Drew Morris. Our graphic and logo work is done by Tessa Price, and our original compositions and theme music were composed by Drew Morris. Say something. Yo.